Hey everybody, it's Alex, and today we're going to be talking about designing a website in Adobe Photoshop. Yes, designing a website in Adobe Photoshop. Believe it or not, you don't have to necessarily go into a program like Dreamweaver or even a do-it-yourself option like Wix to make a really cool and dynamic website. You can actually use Photoshop. And if you're a graphic designer who really enjoys the workflow of Photoshop, maybe you're very comfortable in it, it's a really cool option for web design. Yes, there are limitations to it, but for certain purposes, it might suit your needs for designing your professional, uh, personal, or otherwise website. So today I'm gonna go through a little mock demonstration of how to do this process and uh, just show you how to go through basically all the little obstacles and end up with a really cool, uh, you know, cool personal or professional or otherwise website. So. Um, you know, if you're in my graphic design class at the uh, East Los Angeles Occupational Center or otherwise, um, you're probably familiar with my Schoology site. If not, if you're just visiting uh, my YouTube page, this is something you can just pay attention to. There's a little link here under the assignment which talks about resolutions. And this is something just to start thinking about as we get started here. So, um, you know, 1440 pixels is sort of a nice standard for the width of a website when you're displaying it on, you know, a, a computer, standard laptop or desktop computer that will be friendly to, you know, most uh, screens, especially in 2021 and beyond. Um, and then these are some other values to think about in terms of it being friendly to, you know, iPads and then eventually uh, iPhones, okay? Now, as you get into more dynamic web design in uh, Dreamweaver or Wix or one of these other options, yes, there will be ways to make a custom uh, smartphone uh, version of your website as well. But for our purposes, we're just going to try to make one that is friendly to whatever device you're on. So that's a very common uh, tactic. Make a website that is still the width of a screen, but the content has this kind of... Um, you know, this length here, you know, 1,140 pixels width, and then 1024, kind of that boundary, that content safe boundary there. Um, so there's just something to think about in terms of laying it out and when you're starting in Photoshop. So I took the liberty of making a new folder, and this is something to think about from the, the get-go. A website is really just a folder of stuff. That's really what it is. It's a lot of organization. It's a lot of bookkeeping. Okay, so if you end up getting, you know, hosting space on GoDaddy or any of these other uh, places where you can online get some hosting space, you're really just going to upload your files. And usually it's one big folder with all the stuff in it. So what you should do to start is just make a new folder. And by the way, I want you to get in the habit when you're working with uh, web design to keep everything lowercase, all your letters lowercase, and don't leave any spaces. If you have to have a space, put an underscore or a dash. Um, the reason is it, when, it, when it comes to actually connecting your website, uh, it's just going to save you a lot of problems. If everything's lowercase and, uh, and, th and by the way, this is just the, the, the files, the names of the files. This has nothing to do with the content, whatever you put on the site, the t it can, you know, your topography choices, all that can be capital, whatever font. I'm just talking about the file system. So I made a folder here, my website, you can call it something else, whatever your name or whatever. And then inside of here. Uh, the next thing I want you to do is immediately make an images folder, all lowercase letters, images, okay? Uh, I have a couple other things in there, but for now, you should have just a main folder and inside of it an images folder, okay? The next thing you're going to do is you're going to make the template for your site, okay? Uh, so I've already made my template here. If you were in Photoshop the first time, you would go File, New, and again, um, you know, you can even go to web here. They have some presets, but... You know, I, I, you know, the, and if you want, you can use one of them. If you want, there's, there's even, as you can see here, there's the 1440 option. Um, so if you want to choose that one, that's pretty cool. By the way, the height, you know, yeah, it could be 900 pixels as the standard. Um, you might go a little taller if you want to have a scrolling option. So that's really up to you. It's the width that's the most important thing, that nothing goes off the page. Okay, so you could choose this one if you want. Um, you know, you could plug, or you could just manually plug it in. Yeah, but 1440 is a good, is a good choice. So, um, 
What I ended up doing is just designing, and by the way, this is a little bit based on my existing website. So if you're familiar with my existing website, you'll say, hey, that looks familiar. Well, I just, I kind of took assets from it just to kind of streamline it a little bit here. But um, this is what I ended up with for my template, okay? So my template is basically um, the blank kind of, you know, template for the site. So my whole site is going to have this upper navigation bar here. Actually, let's do command zero to fill it, yeah upper navigation bar here with home, about, gallery, and contact. So this is where you have to think about, okay, what, what pages do you want to have? For this assignment, I'm asking my students in my class to have at least a gallery page, right? Because the whole idea here is you're going to, you know, host some of your uh, graphic design images. You know, it could be a place, if you want right now, to, to put all of your work from the other semesters and have a online portfolio, okay? You have your PDF portfolio, and now you can have your digital portfolio. But if you'd like to use it for something else, if you have a small business, if you just want to use it for something, pretend, if you want to, whatever, you, you want to do it for some other art you do, paintings, or or maybe you just want to do like, you know, my cousin does custom action figures. You know, maybe there's something you want to, you want to make this website specifically for it. That's fine. That's totally fine. Um, I definitely put, would put a homepage. The about is kind of a cool thing because it's a, a place to describe you know, what the, the website's for. And then usually you want some sort of contact, okay, some sort of contact um, tab. So then I just kept it very basic here, just sort of a white background with this blue, um, you know, sort of navy blue navigation up here. And this is my template, okay, with all my little text layers here, okay. Um, this, by the way, I, I was using my original website just as a guide. That's why that's there. But really, I don't even need that well, I guess I'm sorry. <laughs> it's part of the it's part of the blue strip at the at the top, so I do need it. But I covered it with the white rectangle there, just so you know. Uh, okay, so that was my website, uh, my my template. Okay, don't need to save that. Now, from that template, this is what's really important. So you think about, okay, what are all your pages? You're going to spawn all your other pages. So, for instance, I did an about page. I, I'm skipping home for now because I'm I'm going to talk about that in a moment. So I did an about page. Okay. And you can see here, uh, just has some text about me. That This is borrowed from my actual website. Very straightforward. Notice I kept it in that content safe kind of margin. What we were looking at the other, on the other page here, that, that sort of area here where I don't want it to go too far because I want it to be friendly on a, a smartphone or on an iPad, a smaller iPad that doesn't have as much width or, 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 or Kindle Fire and so forth. Okay. So that's my about page. Then I also made my, and you say, just all you have to do is just do a save as, right? Save as, save it as another Photoshop file and just change the name. So then I save my, my um, what is it? Gallery page. So then my gallery page is all the different gallery, gallery images I wanted to include. So in my case, because I'm leaning in again to my, you know, film side of my life, I am a screenwriter producer. I included all the different movie posters for, well, not all, but many of the movie posters to uh, film and television projects I've been involved in. So Balcony, Ephraim, Fig, the movie I did with Ryan Coogler, the Kung Fu Panda and Puss in Boots. I probably should have put these side by side. That's okay. Um, you know, animated webisodes and the LPL project, something I did for the uh, LUSD and Larrick uh, school district, right? Or, or all the school districts of uh, Larrick. Um, and adult programs of Lyric. Okay, so um, so something very important when you come to this step. You have to find your images to put on here. And remember you made that images folder? This is the step where you would put those different images, the full size version. So I have the large versions of my posters, right? All inside of that images, okay? And if they have weird names, just rename them. I'd keep them JPEGs, and I'd give them, again, all lowercase letter names. So Balcony, Ephraim JPG, Fig JPG, Kung Fu Panda JPG. Uh, and notice I put the little underscores if there's a space. So just keep them lowercase, keep them JPEGs, ideally, just to keep it simple, and give them underscores if there's spaces. Okay, and then put them all, the large version in your images, on your actual gallery PSD, you can bring them in and resize them. I also use the district, you know, distribute horizontal and vertical centers and so forth options, right? The align panel, you know, this is why a graphic design web design is the fourth level 
of my graphic design program, you really, it's built upon all your knowledge previously. So hopefully by now you know how to use the align panel. It's basically up here if you're on the, um, the move tool, right? This, and then you can kind of select different uh, layers. You can align them, line them up. There's also, you know, smart guides and so forth to see, tell you if you're centered or not, right? Those purple, depending on your choice of color lines. And um, yeah, I'm keeping it in the content safe margins here. And um, you can measure that if you want with your with your inches up here and so forth, or, or just ballpark it as close as you can. So again, you need small thumbnail versions here, and you need large versions in your image folder, the one that's in images, plural, that is inside of my website, right? Or whatever your website's name is. Okay, everything's lowercase, everything's a JPEG. So if you have existing images that have different names, just, just copy and rename them, put them in that images folder. And then finally, again, I did a save as, and then changed the content and created a PS, another PSD, my contact page. And by the way, this isn't a real email, Alex content, and I have no idea who that is, but it's just a placeholder. I also put links to my Facebook, you know, it's like my, my LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. So that's something you can do too, you know, put links to your different uh, websites. Okay, so... Once you've done that, you've basically, and this, by the way, I, I'm saying do all that. I did it in, you know, minutes here. I had already created all this. This is a big part of it. You know, you can hit the pause button if you need right now. And a lot of it is just designing. So you have to go and you have to design all these pages. You know, that's going to take you some time. Okay. And finally, you're going to design the homepage. The reason I, I, I kept that for last, um, one, because it's usually the page that is the most labor intensive because it's your, your, the page you're presenting your face really to the world. It's the first one that comes up, but also a very important distinction. When you do a save as for that one, you're not going to say home. You're going to say index.psd, index. Now you might say index. Why is the home page called index? Well, this has to once again do with web design. The index page, there's always an index page to be the sort of central main page. So generally it's the same as the home page and it doesn't get the name home. Some people call it the welcome page. So just call it index and understand that that is the home page. Okay. So my index PSD, again, I just kind of borrowed from my existing page. Still has the banner up here. And then it just has this one slide. I mean, you could ignore the fact, I know there's some other uh, little bullet points here as if like I, I, you know, there was other, and there's even an arrow here. That has to do with my existing website. There is a little slide element to it, but again, I'm not gonna include that right now. This is just for demonstration purposes, demonstration purposes. Okay, so here we go. So you've made all your pages. You know, like I said, this, this might take you a while. It's, it's the design element. You might wanna put your picture, put your title, think about what your brand is, you know, what's your color scheme. All the design principles we've talked about go into this. And usually you want some consistency across pages. That's why there's generally this kind of navigation bar at the top. You don't want to go too much mixing, you know, different colors or different themes. There should be a little bit of repetition. You know, we talked about the big four, alignment, proximity, repetition, and contrast. Should be a little bit of consistency across all of your pages. Okay, so once you've made all your pages, now we're going to go into the fun part where we're going to start uh, programming the website. Um, and by the way, I, I guess, um, well, okay, let's go with that first. Yeah, that's fine. So we're going to start programming the website. Now, what does that mean? Right now, all these are, are Photoshop files, right? There's nothing that they do. They're not connected in any way. Yes, they're in a folder here, but they don't, you know, there's no connection. There's nothing. If I uploaded these to GoDaddy, they're not going to do anything. I have to make them into HTML files. And I also want to create interactive elements. So we talk about UI UI, right, the user interface, which is basically what I did here. I created the scaffolding or the skeleton. Now we're gonna get into UX, user, user experience. User experience is what happens when you click, you go to a page, you know, the different element, the connectivity, the animation, the whatever. So that's what we're gonna be doing now, the UX side of it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my index PSD. That's my index page, my home page. And there's a tool here, if you go down, right, your tools on the side here. Uh, it's going to be nested underneath where the, um, not where the frame tool is, sorry, where the crop tool is. And it's called the slice tool, slice tool. Sometimes you, you, if you're already on the slice select tool, it, it just chooses one big slice here, by the way. 
But anyway, because uh, you always have one slice by default. But the slice tool, very important. It's it's sometimes confused with other tools. It's called the slice tool. Okay, it's not. You know, you might be familiar with other tools, especially in Illustrator using the knife, um, you know, or, or, or scissors or different cutting tools. No, it's slice. And what can you do with the slice tool? Well, you can drag around certain objects and create slices, which will become buttons. So let me demonstrate at the top here. I want the home about gallery and contact to be buttons that will connect to other pages. So what I do is I drag a square around the home button like this. And then I'm going to go to the about, and the good thing is it does have these kind of smart guides to help you kind of give it a little bit of consistency. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just you know where your how you know how close your mouse can be, you know how much margin of error you want to give your mouse in terms of uh, being able to click that button. Okay. And I've made one, two, three, four slices here. Okay. It actually says more different number because what happens is it creates auto slices. <clears throat> gets I don't want to confuse you too much, but that's just something to be aware of. So these are all four slices now. Okay, <clears throat> and now what happens with these slices? Well, I can actually program them. So if I go to the Slice Select tool, same place where the Crop tool is, hold the click, go to Slice Select tool. Now I'm going to double click on this Home Slice. And it brings up a slice option here. Now I'm going to name this one uh, Home. And I guess if you want, you can keep it lower. I mean, that's not as important, the name, because it's not... But if you want, you, just to keep it consistent. Now, the URL, this is where we're going to program it where to go. Now, where is this one going to go? <clears throat> well, this is a link really to itself, right? It's the home page. This will be more important on other pages, but, for, but in this case, it's just going to sort of refresh the page. Either way, it's going to go to the index, I-N-D-E-X dot H-T-M-L. It's going to go to the index HTML page. Now, target, this is a really important part as well. What does target mean? Well, you can choose target underscore blank. And what that will do is it will open up a new tab if you're in Safari or Google Chrome or whatever. Um, but sometimes you don't want to do that. Most of the time, especially if it's a navigation bar, you want to do underscore, again, underscore self. And what that means is it will stay in the same tab in the uh, web browser uh, and um, rather than opening up a new one. And that's a little better for navigating if you're jumping around the website. Uh, you can put some alternative tag here, some alternative, you know, that's sort of, again, that's a little bit getting into optimization stuff. So, <clears throat> you know, if you want to identify uh, what this is, it's, but I'm going to leave that blank for now just to keep it simple. So there's index HTML, okay? Now I'm going to go to about. It's going to be a similar thing. The title is about. The URL in this case is about.html. Everything has to be spelled correctly here. It has to be all lowercase. You make a typo, it's going to mess up. Okay, And you'll know because when you try it later, it won't work. And you'll have to re-export. Okay? Once again, underscore self. I think I'll actually copy this so it's easy to paste. Okay, Let's go to gallery. Right? Gallery. Gallery.html. <clears throat> Target is self, and then we click OK. Contact. Contact is the title. Contact.html is the URL. The target is self. Okay. <clears throat> Very good. Now, there might be other things on this page you want to link to. Maybe your picture links to something. I don't know. Maybe your picture you want it to blow up bigger. I don't know. There might be something else. You can also create a big slice out of this. Maybe there's something here that you're going to update every week and you want it to be about you, or, or maybe there's a picture, but then you have your weekly update here. That could be something too, where you can make a slice and you could just uh, replace it every week or whatever you want to do. Also down at the bottom here, you're going to notice we have our social media tabs and you can do the same thing where you just create your, uh, oops, I'm sorry, I'm on the slice select tool. I hope I didn't move anything. No. Okay, good. <clears throat> Go back to the slice tool. Then we zoom in on our social media, and then yeah, you'd have to create, you know, links for all these. And again, just drag a square around, you know, how, however much you want. You can always adjust it after if you didn't get enough of it. Not a big deal. See, it has those boxes. I probably did a little bit too little on the. Um, if I go to the slice select tool, I could always select the Facebook one to make it a little bigger. 
Um, and, you know, I, I'm not going to program all of these, you know, if, if we're going to do, just for argument's sake, I'm going to go to my Twitter here. Okay. So this is my Twitter page. And um, I'm going to copy the URL up here. And I'm going to go to, uh, da, 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 da. yeah, Twitter here, double click it. And so in this case, I'm going to say uh, Twitter, the URL I'm going to paste, because it's going to go to an external website. And the target, this time I want it to do blank, because I want it to open up a separate page, right? Because then I still have my website there if you want to still navigate through it. Okay, I would keep self for anything within the website and uh, blank to open up again a blank you know you think of it as opening up another tab for out, outside elements uh, again you could do all of these I'm not going to do them all but the, just for argument's sake I wanted to show you that okay so um, you know once you're done with this once you are done with this um, you would move on again you, you, you know you could save it file save and you can move on to one of the other ones. So let's say we go on to about. My about's pretty straightforward here. Um, but then I could drag around each of these and just do the same thing. Uh, whoops, got to go on the, the slice tool. Create your slices again. Um, <clears throat> there is a way to, you know, someone might be thinking, well, can you just copy and paste? Yes, there are methods for that. I only have four here, so I'm not really that worried about it. I guess if you had a ton of them, you might look at... Um, you know, cloning the, the page before you do this, just so you have this already programmed in. But, you know, that's okay. Um, you know, it's pretty straightforward here. Again, this is going to go to uh, uh, index. The URL is going to be um, uh, index.html. The target is going to be self. And you just keep doing it again. You know, about, about HTML. <laughs> Probably gonna have a typo because I'm doing this so so quickly here. No, self, because I didn't copy it. Self, you know, gallery. Again, it's just bookkeeping. That's what so much of web design is. You know, some of these guys, like the really smart people that do the coding side of it, like Mark Zuckerberg and so forth, they just have minds for like keeping like thousands of drawer, drawers in their head at the same time. You know what I mean? So, you know, some people are just even more programmed in their mind to do that kind of stuff. They would click OK. Now here, there's nothing really else that I need to add a, you know, a slice for. So this is fine. So just for now, <clears throat> I know I still have the contact page in the gallery. Let's just do these. Let's just export these two, just so you can see what it, how it works with these two. So I'm going to go back to index. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do file export, save for web legacy, save for web legacy. So it brings up this box here. Now don't get don't get overwhelmed. I know this looks a little intimidating. The big thing that you should notice is you can click on individual slices. Now some of these slices, if they're not too many colors, you would you might want to keep them as uh, gifs actually because it will help with your website's optimization. A GIF uh, is less intense, it doesn't require as many colors, so it loads a little more efficiently. Now obviously the, the slices that overlap my face and so forth, that's going to be problematic because they need to be, you know, thousands and thousands of colors, right? So I'm just going to just do those as GIFs. Everything else can stay a JPEG or whatever. And if, and if they are GIFs, you can just manually click on everything and make them JPEGs, okay? Otherwise, you might, you might notice there's a lot of little slices, you even have to come in here Get these little guys that you cut out um, and so forth. But that's it. Just, you know, uh, I would just, I, I, you could make these GIFs as well. I don't if that's, and you could zoom in a little bit um, if you'd like to do that. Um, you know, I guess for, for our argument's sake, they could be GIFs. Um, oh, there already are GIFs. That's cool. Here we go. <laughs> um, so yeah, those could be GIFs. But yeah, when it comes to this stuff here, keep a JPEG. So anyway, once that's all done, and some of it will default to what it should be anyway, based on the, you know, the, you know, what it was set to beforehand. But I would just keep the buttons, if they're simple enough, as long as they don't have like a gradient or something that's very complicated or, or a mesh or, or a picture in it, a raster picture. Make them GIFs, make the buttons down here GIFs, make everything else JPEGs. All you do is you click Save, okay? 
It's going to take you to this next window here. Make sure you navigate to my website so you'll see all your PSDs and your images. And then down here, really important, really important, it's got to be format HTML and images. HTML and images. Okay, not just H images only, not just HTML only, HTML and images. Okay, so you click save. And it's going to generate uh, the page. Okay. So that one is done. <clears throat> then I'm going to go to the about page, file, save as. Oh, not save as, what am I saying? Export, right. Export, save for web legacy. Once again, make sure these guys up here are uh, GIFs. Um, you know, uh, there is an argument to be made to make. Um, since I kept my colors pretty simple on this page, I could make the rest of it GIFs, I guess, but I don't know. I'm just, it's okay, I don't, you know, for argument's sake, I'm just going to move on here. Click Save, <clears throat> HTML and Images, and then click Save. Okay, but, oh, yeah, some of this files exist. In those. That's okay. If, if I guess if you get this, you can go ahead and do a replace. You might get a, a, a thing like that. Okay, so let's take a look and see if it worked. Believe it or not, we should be able to see some of this now. So if I go to um, index HTML and I'm going to double click it, it's going to open it in my default, uh, which is Safari. So it's an HTML page now. Now let's go ahead and click on About. Takes me to About. Let's go ahead and click on Home. Takes me back to Home. Now if I click Gallery, there's nothing there, right? Because I haven't exported it yet. But I can see those two buttons are working. So very good. Now let's see if the uh, Twitter one's working. <clears throat> There's my Twitter page. Hooray! So yeah, exter external links are the easiest. Okay, so we're almost there. I already, I already did some of the programming. Now I want to go to gallery. I, I paused on gallery for a little bit because it's a little bit trickier because now I want to actually create links for all of these. So you can do your stuff at the top here, right? Um, you can create all your links there. Uh, I'm going to pause on that just for just because I want to move along here. And um, I want to show you a little shortcut you can do in some cases as well. Yes, I could drag a box around all of these like I did the previous step. But there is an option. There is an option uh, where under layers, or layer I should say, new layer-based slices. New layer-based slices. Now what does that do? Look at this. It automatically makes slices based on your layers. Now because I have... These different posters, as separate layers, already cut out. It automatically made them into layers. So it did some of the work for me. So that might be something you want to do. I don't want, again, I don't want to overcomplicate it. If it's simple for you just to go to the slice tool and drag the square around, that's fine too. You can always adjust it, make it fit very nicely, that kind of thing. Now, in case of these links, where do we want them to go? Think about this. Again, this is all bookkeeping. I want them to go to the images folder and bring up the big version. Okay, and you're going to notice now, oh, what's all this? Inside of here, there's all these other little images. Yes, Photoshop was smart enough to know, because you made a master folder with images folder, to put the little pieces of the other pages in there. So you're going to see little pieces of the index page, the home page, and little pieces of the about page. That's fine. Just leave them. Look at there. There are all the slices of the buttons. They're in there. So all the slices, even little pieces of me that were cut up. Okay, just leave it all. Not a problem. I'm going to come down here and you see, just because I have to make sure I know the names of everything. Okay, so the first one is the balcony poster. So I want to make sure, yeah, so it's balcony JPG. So I'm going to go to my slice select tool, double click. The name is balcony. The URL in this case is images slash balcony dot JPG. And don't forget the dot JPG. It's got to be images, it goes into that folder, then slash. By default, it knows to go into the master folder. Everything looks in the master folder first. This just tells you, oh, this tells it, oh, go into this subfolder of images and look for balcony JPG. Okay, now what do I want to do in this case? Do I want to do blank or do I want to do self? Well, it's going to bring a pop-up to a larger version of the image. I think, I think I want to do a blank. I think I want it to go to a separate tab. So that if you still wanted to navigate the site, it's still there. It feels like one of those, you know, almost like Google Images where you click it and the big one comes up separately. So I'm going to do blank in this case. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, and then I'm just double checking the names. Yeah, Ephraim, just to make sure I did that. Yeah, so the next one, oops. So this one, yeah, so that's that one. This one, make sure you select the right one. Well, that's interesting. I wonder why it's, um, it's giving it the same name there. Uh, yeah, let me just try changing that. Although this makes it convenient because, you know, all the stuff is there. <laughs> all the stuff is there. So images, Ephraim, JPG, blank. Okay. Now is this one? Oh no, it changed this one. That's interesting. I wonder what's going on here. For some reason, it's not recognizing me jumping between these. So this is a big thing here. I want to make sure. Yeah, go over there. Go here. Yeah, this is... Um, you can zoom in just to make sure, by the way. I'm double-checking everything here. So this is slice number three. And this is actually doesn't doesn't increase the size of the number. So this is slice number five. Yeah, so if I'm on slice five, you should see a little slight orange appear around it if it's selected. That's how you know. So I'm gonna click I'm gonna click over here and then click here. So that's interesting how it's not um, Oh, it's not quite getting it. Oh, no, it is. Okay, I see the orange around it there. Okay, good. Okay, so this should change to balcony and stay balcony. This is actually good this happened because I don't want you guys to mess up and uh, stuff like this. So let's just make sure. Now, this one, yeah, this one is still Ephraim and this one is still balcony. Good. Okay, so yeah, uh, just be careful. You know, the fail safe is, do you see that orange edge? Um, I think even if you just click right on the um, right on the number, if it's really not catching it, for, or you know, click away for a second and then click on the number just to make sure it's truly getting it. So this one, um, yeah, but you know, it would be blank, right? Hmm. Okay, here we go. Hmm. That's interesting. I don't know why it's um. It's giving us such difficulty right now because um, I'm worried this is going to change the... Okay, I'm going to change this to fig. Okay, but let me just double check Ephraim. No, Ephraim's okay, okay. And this one... Okay, it's okay, yeah. Yeah, just... Um, I don't know, sometimes it's it, it's a little finicky if it doesn't quite catch... Oh, I'm going to make this um, title ba balcony, yeah. Okay, then down here, I'm, I'm pretty sure this one's Kung Fu Panda. I see the orange around it, that's good. Okay, so this will be Kung Fu Panda. I got the privilege of writing a couple of these for DreamWorks TV with my writing partner, Matt. Then we have LPL Project. Clicking to make sure I see that orange. Really, yeah, I see that slight orange edge. So this is just LPL. Remember, it's just all LPL. Yep. Period JPG. Okay. And then finally, good old puss. Puss in boots. So, or did I just, I think I called it. Yeah, I called it puss in boots. Okay. So, puss in Boots. You can even copy that. Puss in boots. Okay, so hopefully this worked okay. Again, we can go up here and we can do our um, infrastructure up here as well. You know, uh, I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to burn too much time here. So I'm just gonna, for argument's sake, do the home button, just so that we have that in case we need to jump back home here. And you can do the rest on your own, of course. So this would be what? Index, uh, index.html, and it goes to self. Okay, so there we, ha there we have it. All right, let's see if we can make this one work. So I'm gonna go ahead, file, export, save for web legacy. Okay, back again. Now again, I want all of these to be JPEGs because they are movie posters, a lot of images on them, okay? So I'm not even going to worry. This one up here, sure, I'll make it a GIF. I didn't really do it for the other ones, but 
Okay, so then we click save. Again, I'm, I'm sort of abridging it a little bit just because I want you guys to, uh, yeah, I want to get through this kind of quick, let you get started. HTML and images, make sure your website, save. There might be a little bit of replacing it tells you. Um, so if it does tell you that, um, don't worry because it just means it's going to replace the, um, not the big one. Uh, oh, actually, wait a minute. Some of the specific font. Hmm. Wait a minute. Although this does worry me. Is it going to replace the large one? Um, which we don't want it to do. Yeah, you know what? Um, this was a good little mistake as well. Um, I would not give it the same name. So you have to say balcony maybe SM, like small, so that it knows um, not to replace the big one. See what I'm saying? So same thing for Ephraim. Ephraim underscore maybe SM. Yeah. So that could have been a bad thing, but I spotted it. And I would have made, replaced all my posters. Uh, okay. But I stopped it before it happened. Lowercase SM. Yeah. That's really the only, it, it's okay if you replace the home button or whatever, because we already, you know, it's going to be the same size on each page, right? So some of them I don't care if it replaced, but that, those posts, I don't want the big ones replaced by the smaller thumbnail versions, right? That would be a problem. So now export save for web and legacy. Uh, save, HTML, okay, and then we go, then we'll just do save. And then it's only replacing space or GIF and index. Great, okay, perfect. Now we'll go back. And um, yeah, there's a whole lot of stuff in here, even smaller versions, right? See how it's Kung Fu Panda underscore SM? Yeah, really important. It generated that, that title so that it doesn't replace the original, okay? Um, so if you do want something not to replace the original, if it is like linking to a bigger version, yeah, you have to give it a different name. Okay, so we go to index HTML. So let's test it out. So I already knew there are about in our homework. Now let's go to our gallery. And let's click on them. Yay, the big one. Yay. Yay. <laughs> okay, see? One a, and notice they're opening new tab. Oh, wait, that one didn't open. Why didn't that one open? Was, oh, image. I must have forgot the slash. That's, that's okay. But anyway, notice that it created new new tabs for each. That's the point I wanted to raise there. But this is a good thing to happen too. I like mistakes happening while I do this. Let's say you export it and one thing isn't working. It's okay. Just go back, double click with the, sl the slice select tool. I notice here that I forgot to do the slash in my, in my haste for images slash Puss in Boots. Okay, now I click okay. You can just once again do save, or sorry, export, Save for web, web Legacy. This is already set here. Save. And it's going to have you replace everything. That's okay. That's okay. So it's going to have me replace everything. That's fine. We already know it's not going to replace anything that we're worried about. So it's okay. So click Replace. Now let's test it. So here's HTML. We go to About. We go to Gallery. And we click on Puss in Boots. Yay, it works. Okay. So everything is kind of working. There's one more page that I need to do. And that's the contact page. Oh, and my phone, of course, is, is, is ringing because I'm in my office. But that's okay. We're going to press on. So the contact page. This one is going to be pretty straightforward. Um, once again, if I want, I can go ahead and I can, um, you know, I can just take that same... Uh, uh, URL for my Twitter. Again, you could put your Facebook, your Instagram, all that stuff in there. Don't worry about it. So I'm going to go ahead and um, go to the slice tool and drag a slice around the Twitter icon here. Hello. Okay. I'm going to go to the slice select tool and make any little adjustments that I need to make here. Okay. So make it the right size. Now I'm just going to copy that same um, URL right for my Twitter. So just go to your Twitter page. Again, you can do the same thing for your Facebook page, same thing for your Instagram. You can connect to all of them, whatever you want to do. Maybe there's something else you want to connect to, you know, whatever you want to do. And we just do um, 
you know, Twitter, uh, you know, in this case, although I am thinking about this, um, if you are doing slices across pages, yeah, you know, it, 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 and you, and it does, you do, you do want it to not risk, because you might not make it the exact same size icon or slice, I should say. For, so, you know, it might be good to name it Twitter, um, keep it lowercase here, Twitter underscore um, contact. So, you know, it's the Twitter icon on the contact page. Yeah, that might be something you might want to consider doing just because um, up here with the home and about, it's not really a big deal if you replace it and it's not exactly the same size because um, it should fit okay. But this might be a problem here because I don't know if you intrude a little bit on the white or outside of the boundary. So you could give it a unique name, Twitter, and just say whatever page it's for, Twitter contact. So the URL, I'm going to give my Twitter URL and my target is going to be once again uh, blank because it's outside of it's outside of the website. Click OK. Now, what about this? Yes, anybody could just copy that. That's fine. But I want to make that a clickable button that will take you to um, that specific address and actually load it in your mail. So there's actually an email code for that. Um, and if you ever forget it, you can just... Google it, usually it's there, email code, uh, you know, HTML email code, um, mail to, so here we go, right, mail to. <clears throat> so what is mail to link? It's, it's gonna be a thing that directly, so, so mail to your email address, okay? So this is kind of the way to think about it. Oops, I lost the page, I'm trying to blow it up. Right here, mail to colon, and then put your email address, no space. Okay, let's try it out. So I'm going to make a new slice, slice tool. I'm going to go to the slice select tool, double click. It's as usual, I'm going to call this one uh, mail. And then I'm going to say the URL is mail to colon whatever your email is. Mine is Alex contact. Again, it's a fake one at Gmail. Dot com. I don't know who that's it. I'm just I just made one up. Where a self wouldn't really make sense. So yeah, let's do underscore blank. And then we do 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 do. Yeah, that's about it. I mean again, I, I'm gonna just do the first button here. Um didn't do that well. <laughs> I'm getting lazy as we get toward the end here. Okay, so now that we've done that, yeah, slice select tool, double click it. Um Home, again, if you want, you could say home and then underscore, you know, contact if you want to specify the specific one. If you're worried about, I don't know how dynamic your design is, but yeah, I, I, I didn't think about the fact that you might be saving over the home from other pages if there's a, enough of a, a difference here. So you might want to specify the actual page it's on. Um, once again, URL for that one is going to be uh, index.html. And the target will be self, right? Okay, very good. So let's, um, and again, you can do the rest of these if you have, depending on how many tabs you have at the top there. So let's go ahead and uh, export for Save for Web Legacy. And um, if I did all of them, I'd make them all GIFs and so forth. Do a save. HTML and images, save. It's only going to re replace the spacer GIF because I called it Home Contact. Okay, let's test this out now. So I go to index. I'm going to go to contact. Oh, wait a minute. Why is contact not working? HTM, H, oh, because look, I said HMTL. There's another mistake. Okay, good. The more mistakes, the better, because then you can see the pitfalls that can happen. I mean, this is, you work the kinks out. You know, this is pre-flight, pre-flight for web design. HTML, okay? Now, this one, I'm gonna re-export the index page, that's fine. Everything should be, it should remember everything. You just replace it all. Okay, not a big deal. And now we'll go back to index and let's see, contact should work now. And it does. And Twitter should work, and it does. Okay, now how about email? And it does. Okay, let's just choose one. Um, I haven't set this up yet. Well, 
whatever, it, it, you know, I hadn't set it up for this computer, but it, 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 if you had one of these open, it would put in the two fields the name already. So it's a nice little thing just to kind of, nice little touch you can add where there's a clickable email address, okay? But this is pretty much ready to go now, this website. I mean, it is, um, it is armed and ready, baby, okay? So the only other thing you might want to add, you know, to the UX experience, some people like to do this, and I don't want to overcomplicate things. For the, for the purposes of the assignment, this would be totally fine. If you made a couple pages that are interactive, you made a gallery site, that would work just fine um, <clears throat> for those of you who are in my class. But some people like to add a little more to the UX, and what you could do is maybe add a little bit of animation. Um, one example is if we went to the gallery page, um, so if you've used the animation panel before, it, it's, um, you know, it's, it, it, it gets a little bit, um, gets a little tricky here. Oh, yeah, it used to be animation. Now they call it timeline. There we go. So bring it back. What I'd like to do here with the timeline panel is I'd like to just add a little animation. Okay. And I'd like to have these buttons fade in. Okay. So um, what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to do create a frame animation, okay? It's the option I want to use here. And um, click the first, so there's my first frame, right? And then I'm going to do, so I'm going to leave every, so what, yeah, for my first frame, I'm going to make, these are already selected, the opacity of all of my icons here, right? My, my thumbnails, zero. And what do you think that, you can probably see where I'm going here, right? Then I'm going to do another frame here, or you could just, oh, or click, click the new button. That's fine, yeah. There's the second frame, and then I'm going to make them 100. Now, right now, they would just flicker on, right? But there is an option to add a tween, right, between the two of them. So a tween will allow you to um, have a little bit more frames of animation, you know, between the, the uh, between them here. Um, so I'm going to do tween, and I want to do frames to add maybe 10. There we go. So the, this would be the animation, right? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. There's 12 because there was two frames to begin with. Then I added 10. Uh, and again, you could have other, you could have something move. You could have something off the page, and it moves in. You have these one one at a time fly in. But let's just see what this looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and do um, save for, or export, save for web legacy. So I have to replace, save, once again, HTML and images, save, replace all the stuff there, and then let's go, and then let's open my uh, index, and we'll jump to our gallery page, and let me reload it here, see if it, oh. It's not doing it. They should. It should be animating <clears throat> these um, this this motion here. So let me go ahead and let me do another export save for web legacy. You know what it might be? I'm thinking. Yeah, maybe maybe it has to do with the if if I do. Let me just uh, for argument's sake try GIF. I know that's not ideal because it's it's fewer colors. <clears throat> it may not be that as crisp. Um, color-wise, an image, but I just want to see if that makes a difference if I make it all a GIF. So save, replace, and then we open our gallery. Okay, so now it's actually they look okay. You know, the GIFs are not going to be as dynamic as, um, you know, a JPEG, but that's what it was. Okay, so it needed to be a GIF to animate, although it's doing this weird flicker. <laughs> <laughs> so I want it to stop and stay where it is at the end. Okay, so here it is, yeah, at the bottom. Once, I see. See here it says once, three times, or forever. Just do once. There we go. Okay, so now we just export again really quick. Again, it doesn't matter how many times you have to export this. It'll just keep replacing the content, okay? Okay. And it'll remember, it'll remember each time what you did. So no big deal. So now if I'm not mistaken, third time's a charm, right? It should be looking good here. Gallery. Okay. Yay, and they stay. So 
So it's a nice, um, again, a nice little touch here. So when you load the page, eh, they fade in. Again, you could do something else with movement if you want things to slide in. Anything you can really do, you know, you can create little animations. So something like that is a nice touch to add some animated GIFs and so forth because, um, again, it gives it a little bit more of an enhanced UX user experience. Okay. Um, so I'm pretty happy with what I have here. Um, again, I didn't fill in all the buttons. I'm going to leave it up to you to do that. Um, and you can go ahead and be creative, make your website. You know, when the whole thing is done, this is your website. It's this folder here. Okay. This is the thing you're going to upload to, you know, GoDaddy or whatever, um, hosting, uh, service you use. And it'll be that index page that is really the, uh, the main page where everything is born of. Okay, not index, not index HTML, right? And um, from there, you'll be able to go live. I mean, this website's ready to go live, okay? Um, minus the couple, you know, tabs I still have to program. So that is it. That is how you can make a website in Photoshop. And you can test it on different devices once you put it on the web and see if it works. And try it on your phone, try it on your iPad. Try it on your different, you know, if you have, if you have a PC or a Mac. And I would always try it on different browsers, right? Chrome or Safari, uh, you know, Microsoft Explorer, all that kind of stuff. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you next time. Thank you.